Hey everyone, we're gonna check out another AI video fine tune model that make characters talk. It's called HUMO. HUMO stands for Human Centric Video Generation via Collaborative Multimodal Conditioning. So, what does it do? This one's coming from the ByteDance team. And before HUMO, there was another video generation project called Phantom. This one's pretty much built on decoding and things based on the WAN 2.114B model. But for Humo, they've added multimodal conditioning. That means we're not just using a character reference image to generate video, we can also use audio to lip sync the character in that scene. As you can see in these showcase examples, you just need one image of the character's face as a reference, plus an audio file. You can create cinematic scenes with that character talking, just like you'd see in a movie. We're gonna check out how to use this, and not just for cinematic scenes either. I can totally imagine using this for all kinds of content creation. This multimodal setup doesn't even require an image reference. You can just use text prompting, like in these examples here. A bunch of these clips were generated using only a text prompt and an audio file, and you get characters talking with supernatural facial expressions that sync up perfectly with your audio. And it's not just limited to one image, you can attach multiple images into that video scene. Like this one, Great example, a man and a dog, both interacting with each other in the scene, with audio included too. And here's something else that's interesting. It's called text condition and edit. So when you have it, you can use different text prompts, like here, and each one generates a totally different video output. There's even more comparison stuff on the project page showing you exactly how the video output changes based on your inputs. Over on the Byte Dance Research Hugging Face page, You'll find the Humo repository, all the info's there. And they've got the full model weights for this fine-tuned model. It's called Humo 17B. When you click into it, you'll see all these separate safe tensor files. Again, this is based on WAN 2.1. So I'm guessing most of the setup's gonna feel really similar. But since it's a full model weight, you can't just drop it into Comfy UI or run it easily on your local PC not in a friendly way at least. The WAN video's comfy repo got updated just four days ago. They released a stable version of the WAN video wrapper. And, get this, just 15 hours ago from my recording time, Humo got updated and launched with a more stable version of the video wrapper, now integrated for the Humo AI model. They're experimenting with letting Humo work with infinite talk. So yeah, some stuff's still in the experimental stage. You know how it is with cutting edge tech, you gotta do a lot of fine tuning and modifications. It'll take some time before we get even better versions down the line. Let's take a look at how we can actually use this model on our local PC. First off, head over to the WAN Video's Comfy Hugging Face repo. There's a subfolder called Humo. Inside that, you'll find the models for download. They've combined all those safe tensor files from the full model weight into one file called WAN 2.1 Humo 14 BFP 16 model. And since we're dealing with audio this time, this model uses the Whisper Large version 3 encoder for audio, unlike Infinite Talk, which uses a different audio encoder. So download those two files and save them into your comfy UI folder. So go to your local folder. There's a models folder in there. In my case, I'm putting it in the Comfy UI models folder. And inside that, there's a diffusion models subfolder. That's where you'll save the Humo FP16 model file. To keep things organized, I made another subfolder just for one 2.1 stuff. The other file is the audio encoder we just talked about, Whisper Large V3. Put that in the same folder where you'd normally put the Wave 2 VEC2 model for infinite talk. So, in the audio underscore encoder subfolder inside the models folder. Once you've downloaded those three files, or just the two main ones since the TTS model is optional, you can use any other text to speech AI you like. We're going to check out how to use the WAN videos wrapper with Humo in a comfy UI workflow. First thing, make sure you update to the latest WAN videos wrapper. Like I said, it got updated just 15 hours ago. And I'm using that latest version to run Humo. So, in comfy UI, we're going to use the one videos wrapper as the custom node for Humo. The first thing you'll notice, super obvious, is the Humo embed node. This is where you connect your image and the whisper model. 
that's the Whisper Large V3, hook it up here. You'll also need another input, your audio file, or your generated text-to-speech audio. The VAE here? That's going to connect with our WAN 2.1 VAE. One thing to be aware of, the Humo embed node doesn't connect with Multitalk embed or any other embed inputs. Instead, you connect it directly to the image embed input at the top of the WAN video sampler. Moving along to the top, let's check out the model data. The model data is in here. You'll see the Humo model loaded following this template. By default, the example workflow pulls from the examples folder. So if you load this example workflow into Comfy UI, you'll need to change some settings, like the model files, the VAE loading files, the LoRa files, and the text encoder too, because the file names might not match what you've got locally. In my case, I'm using the Humo 14 BFP16, not the FP8 from the demo workflow, so I had to switch that over to FP16. I also don't need quantization, so I disabled that. Your setup might be a little different. Sage attention? Obviously a good way to go. And if you want to generate longer videos, play around with things like radial stage attention. That's for long length video gen developed by NVIDIA. But for now, let's stick with the basics. First, usage attention. Let's check the text encoder. In my case, I'm using the FP16 version of the UMT5 text encoder model. For the VAE, I'm using FP32, so I had to set the precision to FP32 as well. Now, down at the bottom of the workflow, we've got the audio input. Remember to download the Melband Rollformer model. It's for isolating vocals from instruments. If your audio has background music, like maybe it's a music video or someone talking over a soundtrack, you'll want to separate that out and use just the vocal track for lip syncing. The input image. That's your reference image for generating the video. Let's say I've got a reference image of this young lady I generated earlier with AI. Pay attention to the dimensions. It seems to work best at 720p or 480p. Stick with those two for better results. I'm going to keep all the default settings here and we'll tweak the text prompt to set up our demo video. So, lady talking, that's basically it. Like what I just generated. I used an elf, had her talking while holding up a bow and arrow, all based on the text prompt I wrote, plus the audio I fed in for the elf to speak. One thing, since the audio input doesn't automatically convert timestamps to frame numbers, you'll have to adjust the frame count manually to match the full audio length. Another way, you can connect it dynamically, convert the audio duration to milliseconds, then use a math expression. Milliseconds divided by 1000 times 25. Since we're using 25 frames per second by default, like in the examples, then round that number, that'll give you the total frames, plug that in here, and now you don't have to manually adjust the frame count every time. It'll auto calculate based on how long your audio is, like here, 12 seconds, so it'll generate exactly 300 frames for the Humo embed and sampler. All right, let's generate this using this image. Once you hit generate and the process starts, it'll calculate the number of frames. Hopefully I can get 300 frames in one go with this Humo embed. If you need longer videos, you can use the context options. It'll generate the video in chunks. Okay, I generated two videos here. One looks like this, different hairstyle, slightly different look, but you can still recognize it's the same character. The other one, same seed number, but sometimes they still look a little different. You can see the hairstyle and outfit match my reference image pretty well. What I did here, prompt was, lady holding up a glass of wine sitting at a dining table talking, just a conversational scene. One thing I noticed in my tests, if you don't clearly define in the text prompt what the character's doing or what camera angle you want, it won't generate super dynamic camera movement. It'll mostly just give you a standard talking avatar shot. Also, you might see some color shifts when the video first starts. I've tested this with other WAN 2.1 or WAN 2.2 fine-tuned models too. It's pretty common. Usually after half a second or so, the colors stabilize and look normal again. Overall, the facial expressions for talking? They work pretty well. Nice and natural.
But if you crank up the audio scale in the Humo Embed, that's this setting here, if you push it above 1.5, you'll get super dramatic, almost over the top facial expressions. So you'll want to tweak that value depending on the scene, just based on your preference. Another example I did same prompt, same character input. But you'll notice some flickering every three seconds or so. That's because I was using the window context from the WAN video sampler. If you drag out the context options, you'll see this node. When you enable it, it lets you generate long videos in 81 frame chunks. But it doesn't always keep the style super consistent across chunks. So there's pros and cons to using context options. You'll probably need to tweak the Humo Embed's audio scale and CFG settings a bit more for better results. Other than that, everything else is pretty standard. Input audio, reference image. I also made a small tweak to this workflow, added another section for text to speech. I'm using Vibe Voice here, the 1.5 billion version. It's good enough for one person speaking in a scene. If you want multiple characters, well, Vibe Voice can technically handle multiple speakers. You tag lines with one, two, three to assign different voices, but the output is still just one single audio file. And Humo doesn't work like multi-talk. It can't identify which character is speaking which line or separate them across different audio timelines. If you check out Multitalk, it's got four separate audio inputs, so you can assign different audio clips to different characters and animate their facial expressions based on reference masks. Humo doesn't have that feature yet. Not sure if they'll add it later, but for now it's really focused on one character talking at a time. So if you're using Vit's voice, the 1.5 billion is totally fine for single character scenes. Another way to use Humo, you can add multiple reference images. This workflow template already has image one and image two set up for image batching. So you can input multiple images here. Let's say I wanna add another image. I'll duplicate this group, connect the resized image output to image two and make sure the resize width and height match the first one. In this example, I set up multiple inputs. And for audio, I just fed in a simple four second text to speech demo. But here's the glitch. Both characters are doing the exact same lip sync. It's just an experiment. Right now, Humo doesn't handle multiple audio inputs like Multitalk does. Might be something they add in a future update. Especially since their Byte Dance demo page shows examples with multiple characters and objects. But pay attention, none of those demo videos actually show two people talking at the same time. They're all single character scenes, talking or singing. That's a bit of a drawback. I've seen some folks leave feedback. They're hoping for multi-character conversations in the same scene. But honestly, that might be setting expectations a little too high. Maybe users think the model can do more than it's designed for right now. We'll see what they add in the future. For my own opinion, the video quality isn't quite the best out there right now. I mean, we've already got WAN 2.2, which can do reference to video really well, and you can pair it with multi-talk or infinite talk for lip syncing. So it's not really necessary to download this model and use it for full movie scenes or character dialogue. It's not a must have tool for video content generation. Again, that's just my take. You guys can check it out if you want and I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.